Hi everyone, this is your chess puzzler. Today I want to go through one of the greatest openings that was and still is extremely popular. Before I get started, let me provide some basic stats on this type of opening. Though there are over 850 games in various databases, I have 50 games in my own database from which Wide won 42 games, lost 6 and drew only 2. Using the largest database however, the stats here represent a different picture, with the black nearly winning half of the games played, wide 38% and the rest are drawn. It seems logical that black has overwhelmingly more wins because its opening stems from the black camp. The opening is a two knights defence and you can find it under c57 of the encyclopedia chess opening code. We are not going to look per se at this opening however, but the follow up move that leads to the Facatello gambit attack or something you might be familiar with, the fried liver attack. So Facatello is Italian for putting liver in the net and then cooking it on fire. The Lolli attack is very similar where d4 is played but instead today we're going to look at sacrificing the knight on f7. The origins of the fright liver attack date back to 1610 in Italy and this opening is still popular and very playable even today. Let me swiftly move into this opening which starts with e4, e5, knight f3 and knight c6. White has a plethora of opening choices, for example you can go into the subtle scotch with d4, the spanish with bishop b5, or you can go into an extremely super aggressive Italian with bishop to c4. The choice of opening today is only aimed for those who are very aggressive, so if you are a player of an aggressive nature, this is the opening for you. In the earlier years, both the spanish and Italian openings were very popular, and I will look at a number of variations after we reach the specific opening theme today. Nowadays there is a shift away from the Italian game and even though a popular choice of opening, the Ray Lopez is by far preferred. Coming back to this opening, Black develops his knight to f6 and here we reach the two knights defence. From here, White can add pressure on Black's weakest spot with knight g5. One of Black's very few responses to prevent a near disaster on f7 is to protect with d5. White can capture on d5 and Black has two main choices. If he wants to avoid the fried liver attack, he can move his knight to a5, leaving his bishop to check on b5 and with the exchange of the pawn on c6, the bishop can retrieve. Alternatively, Black can capture on d5 with the knight and it is here where white can either implement the lowly attack with d4 or engage into the fried liver attack by sacrificing his knight on f7 for a minor piece. Black has no choice but to take to save both the queen and rook. White can now develop his queen to f3 with a check. Black can try queen to f6 but after bishop takes knight and bishop to e6 Bishop takes c6, Queen takes and Bishop takes. White is not only two pieces up but also has his castling rights intact against Black who has a very messy development and a badly exposed King. To avoid this situation Black can move his King to e6. The King cannot go to g8 because there is a mate in two with Bishop taking on d5, Bishop e6 and Bishop takes e6 or Bishop takes Queen takes bishop, queen takes and after bishop e6, queen takes and the outcome is the same. So with king e6 being the best move, white can develop his knight to c3 and black can move his knight to b4 to protect the knight on d5. White can now castle on the king's side so that he can get his rook active. Black can now protect the knight with yet another piece so that the knight on b4 is freed up in case a3 is played. White here can play the deadly d4 
with the aim to open up the e-file and does not mind at all about the knight coming to c2. White can now take on e5 and deliberately invites black to take the rook on a1. By taking the rook on a1 it removes the knight from a dangerous square in return to losing a rook that did not have an active play in the game anyway. White has a killer move with rook to d1 because with knight back to c2 and knight takes on d5 there is a mate lurking in the background. Can you see how? If c takes d5, either the bishop or rook can recapture. We can try this with the bishop for example. The queen is forced to take the bishop and after queen takes queen, the king can only retrieve to e7. White has an ingenious plan and needs to be careful because he has given up nearly all his pieces and needs to be accurate. Bishop g5 check is not a difficult move to find. And once again, this move forces the king back to his original post. Can you calculate white's next move? This is e6 and has the object of blocking the king from reaching f7. So with the only move available for black, the bishop kicks in for a possible exchange with e7. But once again, white has an excellent move. I will give you 10 seconds to find this starting from now. This is queen to d8 check and made after bishop takes queen and rook takes bishop on d8. In fact this game was actually played in 1932 in a simultaneous exhibition in Paris with Eugene Alexandrovich Snosko. This is one demonstration of how white wins the fright liver attack. I would like to go back and examine another variation of this opening by returning to the board after knight b4. Instead of castles, white plays directly d4, encouraging the knight to come in and take the rook with a fork on c2. With the king evacuating to d1 and knight takes rook, black leaves the d5 square unprotected and with bishop takes d5 check and with king being forced to d6, knight b5 squares up the situation leaving the king with no alternative but go back to d7 and finally being mated in two with queen f5 check. You will note that the beauty of the fright liver attack is that games are relatively short. In fact, this demonstration was a repetition of the game between Alan Balkany and John Longuski that was played back in 1973 in the Michigan Open. This game only lasted 13 moves. I do not want to give any false ideas about the fried liver attack and that it provides a guaranteed win for white. The objective of this video is to demonstrate the main opening lines of the attack and to familiarise yourself with the principal variation of this incredible opening. On this note, I hope you enjoyed the clip and hope to see you soon in a forthcoming demonstration. In the meantime, please feel free to like and or subscribe. Many thanks for watching.